Welcome viewers to Ageless Interviews, where we talk to everyday people doing extraordinary things. Hats off to our guest today. Let's go. Today I am pleased to introduce to you Jean Knight Pace, who has written a vela called Sheltered. Sheltered is a vela you can read on Amazon.com or download to your Kindle. A vela is a series of episodes released over time that unfold into a story. I've read all 13 episodes of Sheltered. Good evening, Jean. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us about your work. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Can you walk us through Sheltered and tell us what this story is about? Yes. So this story is a Christian historical fiction, and it's fairly short. A lot of things on Vela, since it's episodic, a lot of them are very long. It's kind of a, it's kind of a mini, um, but it is set during World War II in the Netherlands. And there is a young girl named Janneke, and one day a bunch of planes go down at their farm with American soldiers. Most of the soldiers get picked up by the German army, but there's one that they find later hidden in their fields. So then they have to decide, are we going to shelter him or not? Or are we going to pass him off to someone else or not? How are we going to handle this? And so that's kind of what the story is about. Of course, it gets a little more complicated as things go on, but that's the story. Excellent. And Janneke, is that the main character of the story then? Yes, that is the main character. All right. And I saw there was some other sub characters too, it would be pretty much her family and, and the people that they interact with. Yeah. So really her family and then the first soldier, eventually a second soldier gets added. Those are the main characters. There are a few townspeople. That's the cast of characters. A few Germans. They they come in here and there too. Certainly. And how were you inspired to write about rescued allied pilots in the Netherlands? This is a great story. So I actually read an article written in a magazine from years ago. I think it was from maybe the 90s or the early 2000s, which was a true story about how they, when he was a little boy, they had lived in the Netherlands and um, had sheltered a pilot um, and just had this experience with some German soldiers coming to share their religion with them and just this combining of people for one day for one Sunday. Um, and I, I just thought it was so remarkable and so touching that they were sheltering the soldier um, and that they also had room for the, the enemy um, to come and that the enemy had room for them. I don't know. It was a great article and it got me thinking. I lived in the Netherlands in uh, the late 90s for close to a year. And so I love that country. I didn't know anything. I mean, I knew a little about World War II, but I didn't know anything about um, their role in World War II, which was small. They got taken over very quickly. They were neutral. They didn't expect anything to happen. The Germans came in, took them over in five days. Hmm. Um, and the Netherlands is a teeny little country um, geographically. It's about a fifth the size of Ohio. So it's little. For Americans, this is a teeny little country. Um, <clears throat> anyway, they got taken over. And so their response to that, which is very Dutch, was to quietly rebel. And that's what they did. So they had these people that they called themselves helpers. I can't remember the Dutch word for that right now, but they called themselves helpers and the helpers would um, shelter people. They would sometimes lead people to shelter. They would do a lot of things for the allied soldiers at great personal risk. If they got caught, the stakes were high and they just didn't care. And I'm sure there were people who didn't help, but there were many, many helpers in the Netherlands. And in general, they helped people get out of the country um, through Fran through Belgium, through France, over to Spain, eventually, which was also a neutral country. Um, anyway, so that is the background for the story. And I just love the Netherlands. And then the idea of this pilot getting stranded on a farm really appealed to me. Anyway, so there it is. Excellent. And do you have a favorite character in the story? I do. <laughs> of course, I love my main character. I also really love my pilots, but my favorite character is the mother um, because she's a little 
crusty, a little more, um, what's the word? Prickly. She's a little more prickly. The dad is all loving and God fearing and, you know, that kind of a, that kind of a character. He's great too, but the mom is much more realistic, a little more prickly and yet still finds room in her heart to shelter this soldier, even though she understands the danger, she understands the danger to her entire family. Mm -hmm. So she's my favorite. Excellent. Yeah. I, later on in the story, there was a pilot named Peter mm -hmm. and he was, he was making me nervous as a character <laughs> because he knew something was going to, going to be coming up. I was getting near the end of the episodes and I'm, I'm worried about this Peter guy. So that's definitely yeah. to look out for as well. Yeah. Is there anything particular about the Vela format that you like? I, yes. So what I like most about Vela uh, is the, the hooks and it's it's been great for me as a writer to learn to write a good hook at the end so one episode you really want it to make the reader want to go on to the next and I'm not saying I always nail this in fact at first when I was experimenting with Vela, Vela I definitely did not nail it but I got better I got better as I as I worked at it um but I just love these short little episodes and at the end you're like Oh man, I just, I gotta, I gotta go on. I gotta read more. And so I liked learning to create a good hook. I like reading other people's velas. I like kind of the thrill of that little mini like cliffhanger at the end of every episode. So that's what I really like about Vela. Certainly. And you were mentioning other velas. Do you have a favorite author or authors? And what is it that you like about them? That is a question. I have read a lot of Vela's. I really like uh, Tess, I don't know how to say her last name, Combs. I think she writes under Teshel Combs. Um, she writes romantic fantasy, and I like that. I've been reading um, some really great fantasies on Vela um, recently, and I am not coming up with some, with some author names right now, so I might have to get back to you. You might have to put it in the comments. Um, but I enjoy those. I also enjoy a little sweet romance. I love mystery. Again, can I come up with a single name right now? No, I cannot. Um, but I really enjoy, and mystery is great on Vela because again, it's fun to have those little hooks at the end where you're like, ah, now what happened? So it's fun. Absolutely. And what advice would you have for an aspiring writer? My biggest advice for an aspiring writer is to write regularly. And whether that means daily or whether it just means regularly, just to kind of sit your butt down and get some words written. That's another thing I like about Vela is with the short episodes, all you need is 600 words. And then there's an episode. It can be longer. It can be much longer. But they can be short little snippets. And it's a really digestible piece of work. And then you hit publish and there's that episode. Um, and that would be my advice for aspiring writers. Get your little, your little bit, your little drops in your bucket. And I'm always surprised when I add my drops to my bucket, how many cups of water I have at the end of the year. So. Certainly. And you've written a number of Vellas already. Is I have. There, do you have any current projects going on? I do. So my big project I'm working on right now. So I write in three genres. I write in, <laughs> I say that, mainly I write in fantasy. And then I write a little sweet women's fiction. And then I write nonfiction. And this Vela sheltered kind of combined a couple, like, kind of combined a little women's, a little middle grade and a, a little nonfiction. It is fictional um, completely, but uh, historical fiction. So there's that little nonfiction bug there. Right now I'm working on a Hansel and Gretel retelling. So it's paranormal, um, modern day Hansel and Gretel retelling. I'm really excited about it. I love sibling stories. I love fantasy and I love fairy tales. So that's what I'm working on. Right. And who are the friends and family who are supporting you in your writing? I have actually a great support system. Um, my husband's been really supportive even when I wasn't making any money and was just spending a lot of time writing. And writing is a really, as I'm sure you know, front-loaded kind of experience where you do a lot of work hoping that one day something will come of it. He's been so patient and good for that. 
And then my kids have been really supportive. They create art for me. They read my books. They give me feedback. They've been awesome. They're now they're teenagers, but even when they were younger, they were reading some of my younger fiction. Very nice. And do you have any pets that fill out the household? Oh, we have lots of pets. <laughs> we only have one inside. She might, I'm surprised she hasn't made an appearance, but we have one cat. We also have four chickens and nine ducks, and we just had ducklings. So we had six ducks, but now we have nine. So that's exciting. And you know all the names of all your pets? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> I was thinking nine ducks. Yeah, yeah it's to... a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Um, well, we haven't even really named the ducklings yet. Like there's one with a spot on its head. So it's spot. The other two are still nameless. So we'll have to see. Um, I know the chickens. I know the cat, the ducks. I'm like, who are you? We know who the mom is. She's hissy, hissy the duck. Excellent. <laughs> I did have a question looking at the cover of the Vela. You've got a, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a quiz. I promise. But it is a World War II bomber and a, an American bomber, and I noticed it's the B-25 Mitchell, and I know that because I was a big plane fan as a kid, and that was one of the models that I put together. Was there anything oh, cool. about this, uh, was there something about this image that got your attention and said, yeah, that, that would be a great cover if you were <laughs> sheltered? I was looking for images of American or North American planes. I knew I needed that, and so I found a bunch, and that was the one that spoke to me the most and so that's the one that I went with and um if or when this goes into book form I'm sure that it will be a little more embellished a little more than just the plane but sure. that idea of these men just falling from the sky in a destroyed plane maybe the plane will be on fire so <laughs> yeah that would certainly add to the uh, action element for sure <laughs> uh, thank you Jean Knight Pace for sharing your time and insight with us today of course. I'm so happy to do it. Thank you for listening to me and having me chatter on about my books. It's always fun. Certainly. For our cherished viewers, we hope you pick up Sheltered on Amazon.com or Kindle to read the first three episodes for free. And then it's just pennies thereafter. You can also support your favorite authors by clicking their follow button, leave ratings, leave a review because a review is like gold. There's a crown button to vote for your weekly favorite and give them a thumbs up. Just as you can click the like button for this video and subscribe. Until next time, blessings be.